Hello, and welcome to another edition of Girl Talk from Camp to Mead. I'm Judy Stapleton. And I am Alicia Benoit. And today we are continuing with our mandate given in Titus that the older women, that's me, help teach the younger women in the church. And there's younger women than you in the church, mm-hmm. too. So you kind of qualify. You're mm-hmm. in that. Yep. age where you've got some experience under you. Right. But one of the things we're told to teach about is how to love our children. Now, doesn't love come naturally for a mother? Love does come naturally, but uh, patience is in there somewhere. And sometimes <laughs> sometimes we need to work on that and a few other things. So, yes. Because <laughs> yeah, I have the saying, a face only a mother could love. Yeah. See, all of my kids are four-legged. I only have dogs. <laughs> so rule number one, never take parenting advice from somebody with no kids, okay? So anything I have to say is either going to come out of Scripture or out of books I've read or from my experience as a child growing up. So... Anyway, we thought today it'd be a good idea to talk about our children. Oh, but, you know, before we get to that, let's share. We've gotten some really encouraging comments mm-hmm. from our viewers, mm-hmm. and we appreciate it a lot. And we thought we'd we'd share a few of those for you. Alicia, do you want to read? Yes. Okay, let's see here. We have a few. Thank you for this. Very in- insightful, and it showed me I have a lot to work on. Well... That makes a few of us. <laughs> that was the desire one, the, the one yeah. about uh, being yeah. obedient to our husbands and yep. su- uh, submitting to our husbands. And actually, it's it's a good thing for us to do these talks because since then I've thought about it when, you know, certain situations come up. Like it really, for us to do this is actually good for us too. <laughs> sure, absolutely. You can't yeah. teach something that you don't That's right. know or it doesn't, it changes you when you teach something. Yeah. Here's another one. What a wonderful message. Bless you both. I so enjoyed this, sisters, and look so forward to a wonderful future with my husband-to-be and to be the type of helpmate that Yah wants me to be for both him and my future husband. So excited to enter into a godly marriage with a Yah-fearing and amazing man. Praise Yah. I really liked that one. Yeah, so well, exciting. blessings on your upcoming marriage. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> and I hope we can help you out. And, you know, and everyone that's sending these messages, it's really encouraging us because we're, we don't have any experience doing what we're doing. So... <laughs> It does encourage us to make more and videos. And another thing we're open to also is if there's topics you'd like us to discuss, whether or not we're able to do that, qualified to do that, or if we yeah. have to learn to do that. But feel free to add some suggestions if there's something you'd like to hear us discuss. Yeah. Here's another one. I'm so enjoying these Girl Talks sisters. Thank you. With a smiley face. Uh, another one here. Excellent explanation. I enjoy your teachings and talk. Having the spirit of Jehovah in us should help awaken us to help our husbands and not hinder him. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, Helpers. This was such a wonderful, simple explanation that it will help any woman who listens and follows through. Yes, that's the thing, right? Following through. That's the tough part. And I hope you're sharing our messages with your friends, too. If you hear a message that you think would be helpful, please share it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else you got? Um, Dear Judy, I watched your Girl Talk video about desire. I want you to know how very much I benefited from it. Please also let Alicia know. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to your next presentation. Yah bless and guide all at Camp to Meet. Thank you. And this last one, we actually have quite a few men that watch the Girl Talk, and I'm glad they do because there are topics that are going to apply to them as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, this last one's from a gentleman. Hi, Tom. My wife and I follow you on Rumble and enjoy, and enjoy and have profited from your teaching. We relish Girl Talk as it has been a new addition. We enjoy and get a tickle hearing Judy in the background in most of your Rumble posts as she counsels, directs, corrects, and steers you. We are happy to see that dynamic. Well, I'm, I'm trying to be his helper, I, but uh, don't get the idea that, that uh, I'm pulling his strings. But see, I, I do the editing too, and, and I do my best to make him look perfect. If he says something wrong, I'll edit it out or whatever yeah, fix it for him being the help meet for sure yeah exactly so again thank you for the comments it is encouraging and we, yes. we appreciate it very much <laughs> and tom actually had a message he wanted me to give today too that he is working on two presentations he's going to be doing the four horsemen of the apocalypse and he's also doing one on the antichrist we're really discovering that the antichrist is one of the biggest deceptions of satan 
and how he's going to use that to pull off his grand deception at the end. So stay tuned for that. We hope to have those within the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Putting very... these presentations together takes a lot of study and a lot of time. So sometimes you kind of have to be patient with this, and we appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so, so now, before we move into parenting, why don't you open us up with a prayer? Okay. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the guidance that you've given us in your word, and I thank you for um, people that have helped us along the way. Myself, I, I thank you for people that have been put in my path that have helped me through some parenting situations um, and some books that have really helped us, and I thank you for my husband and for our little family that you've blessed us with. And I pray that um, you would give us the words that we can share some of our experiences and some things that... Um, could help other families as well. In Yeshua's name I pray, amen. Amen. And you do have a blessing of a family, and it's been a huge blessing to me to have these two <laughs> wonderful grandchildren. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah, it's, um, parenting is like not necessarily easy, but it's such a blessing. It really is. And to watch the kids growing now, our son is 13 and our daughter is 10, and just watching them blossom into true believers and how they bless other people is so exciting. Yes, well, and Seth is blessing us right now. He's running our, our camera you, equipment Seth. for us, so thank you, Seth. <laughs> okay, so. well, you had some some focuses that you wanted to uh, look at and yeah. kind of... Yeah, so I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I think, um, you know... I guess what I have is experience, um, 13 years of parenting and a lot of really great people and books and things that have kind of helped us along the way. And we thought, you know, um, Titus is about helping people with their families and their children and everything. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that this might be something that might bless other people. So, mm -hmm. so I have to ask, how many times did Tom spank you when you were a little girl? <laughs> Man, well, one thing is I can't really remember that, but I did. I do know that I did probably have a few spankings. <laughs> the last one, my sister and I were both in trouble, and I remember we were kind of snickering before we got our punishment, and I think that was the last time we <laughs> ever had spankings because our parents started realizing it's not really, not really working. <laughs> You know, again, like you, I probably got some spankings when I was young, but I don't remember any. Uh, probably got some hand slaps when you reach yeah. towards a hot yeah. stove or kind of things like that. But I remember just more talking to. Yeah. And yeah. my dad could snap his fingers louder than anybody in the world. He'd snap his fingers like, oh, oh we're in trouble now. <laughs> so even something simple like I that. I remember getting the look. It was always like a stern look, and it's like, oh. <laughs> They noticed whatever I was doing. Yeah. Well, and I mentioned I don't have children. I have dogs. Scooter knows the look. Oh. I, or, or sometimes I'll clap my hands and it, whoa, yeah. he knows he's in trouble. Yeah. So this, those of you who only have had dogs up till you have kids, you can still use those tricks. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, so first of all, we thought we'd share a few verses um, that really talk about parenting. Um, kind of what... Um, some of them are geared more towards the children, and some of them are actually some uh, messages to the parents in how they're how they're disciplining and parenting. So, should we start with some of the ones you had there, Judy? Sure. Well, the first one, and I think a lot of people know this one, is Proverbs twenty two six: to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. So, it's important that children are trained. They by nature, did you have to teach your children to be selfish? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's their nature, right? You have yeah. to teach them to share. Yeah. You have yeah. to teach children the good qualities because we inherited a sinful nature yes. at the fall. So we have to train up our children in the way that is good for them to make their life go easier as they go along. Yeah. Uh, another one I found was, was Proverbs twenty nine fifteen. And I thought that one was kind of interesting, too. Uh, the rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Now, it doesn't say to his parents, just his mother. Mm. So generally speaking, at least back in, in Bible times, it was more of a the mothers the raised the children yeah. and the father was out uh, 
working yeah. hard, which is what's yeah. happening today. Well, it totally does. Like when you see your children acting out, especially in public, it does bring shame. And it's, it is a reflection on the family, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I think in that, in those days, especially like their children were almost, they were that inheritance that would, or I guess not inheritance, but they were the ones that would take care of the parents in the old age. And if their children squandered their life, it was like, Shame to the family, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. One of these days, I actually want to do a girl talk on caretaking parents because that's something that I did. And I've got a friend who's just been through it, and I thought maybe I'd Mm -hmm. have her as a guest, and we might talk about that someday. So, yeah. Um, Let's see, 1324, Proverbs 1324. And I thought this one was really interesting, too. Uh, 24. It says, he who spares his rod hates Mm -hmm. his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Oh, yes. They actually call, if you don't correct your child, that's showing hate to the child. And disciplining promptly, we'll get into into that a little bit later when we talk about consistency. Um, Disciplining promptly is important, not Mm -hmm. letting it go and then, you know, like... It's like that with animals, too, especially with animals, because they will not remember why you correct them later on, right? So Mm -hmm. promptly. Good. I'm glad you brought animals into it, too. I'm not the only one comparing children to dogs. Well, yeah, training dogs is a (laughs) tough challenge. Um, Proverbs 23, you wanted to talk about why it's important. This verse really nails that one. Proverbs 23, it's actually 13 and 14. Do not withhold correction from a child. For if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. No. (laughs) Be gentle. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. Mm. So this links giving correction to your children as saving them for eternal life. So that's a pretty important reason to do correction. Mm -hmm. So those are the main ones that I had found. I know you had some others. Yeah, yeah. So let me see. I'll I'll just take a look here, which ones kind of fit in along with that. So I just want to bring it back to why, why we're here talking about parenting. Um, Kind of something that I try to think about and, and try and remind myself that this is actually a very important um, endeavor in parenting. Um, And in some ways, it's as important or more important than some of the other theologies and things that we get into. When you're a parent, um, God has given us this responsibility and he wants us to, as a believing family, be able to reflect his family in heaven uh, to the world around us. And so it actually is very important and it is a high calling to be a parent and it is important to focus on that and really make that one of your first callings as a family. Um, it's great to do good in, in the world around us, um, mission work and everything else, and be part of a church family, leadership and all that. But um, if your home is a good representation and um, a reflection of our Heavenly Father and the love He has for His family and on earth, that is a huge witness to people around you. Absolutely. So, yeah, so this is a really important topic, I think. We've had people say that when they come visit camp to meet, the children here are so mm-hmm. well behaved. Mm-hmm. So it reflects positively on the camp and our yeah. ministry yeah. by the way our children behave. Yeah, you can have all the truth in the world, but if if it's not showing in your family and your life, and I mean, I will say, though, of course, there are situations where a child goes their own way and... You know, it happened even to some of the patriarchs in the Bible, unfortunately. But yeah. um, but if we can, we want to lead our families in the right way and hope that they'll be a blessing to everyone around them. Um, we were looking in Ephesians. There's a lot in Ephesians about the heavenly family being um, joined with the earthly family. And there's also a lot of parenting tips in Ephesians as well. So that's for your own further study. Mm -hmm. That's one of Tom's favorite books of the Bible because it's really, the whole theme of Ephesians is to teach us how to be ready to join the heavenly kingdom. Mm -hmm. And there's just all kinds of wisdom in Ephesians. Yeah, and we don't know when we're all going to be joined up, but you know, our children might still be children, right? When that day comes and we want them to be ready for that. Um, Mm -hmm. So yes, Ephesians is really great. One thing I did want to say is that 
when it comes to discipline or correction, and I mean, I'm, I'm saying this and I'm not always, uh, you know, everyone makes mistakes, but if you can show your children the long range plan of why they should walk in the ways of Yahweh and in the ways of, you know, the family, uh, the rules and, and all the hedges you make to protect your children, the guidelines, if you can show them why, then they will be way more likely to be happy to do it and um, to keep doing it as they get older. And there's a few places, Proverbs 29, verse 17, um, talks a little bit about that, actually kind of more to the parents, but it, it says, discipline your children and they will give you peace of mind and make your heart glad. And that's true. That's kind of like the one, the opposite of bringing shame on your family, if you, you know. Exactly. Um, and then this one here is more for the child. Um, what chastening is all about. If I can is find it. The Hebrews it. one? Yeah. Hebrews, Hebrews 12 11. Have, there's Hebrews. Hebrews 12 11. Do you want to read that one, Oh, uh, You can go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So, yes. You know, sometimes getting corrected by your parents isn't always the most fun thing, but, but you know, this consistency throughout your childhood will guide you in the right direction if the parents are following their Heavenly Father. And something I thought of when you were talking about this, in marketing and advertising and in business, one of the things they always say your, your advertising should cover is what's in it for me, for your yeah. customer. Well, what's in it for the kids? Yeah. If you show them why it's going to be a benefit to their life right. to have manners and, yep. you know, teach them good table manners. So when they're sitting at a meal, a business meal with their boss sometime, they're not slurping their food yeah. and eating Fumbling. with two hands yeah. and picking you know, <laughs> right. something up. Yeah, you have to put them in that situation and say, hey, you know, and and in love, right? Just like our father, he he disciplines us because he loves us. He doesn't want us to end up in hell, we don't believe in hell, you know, everlasting burning, but um, he doesn't want us to end up in that second death. He wants us to be eternally saved, right? So a little bit of chastening in the meantime, he wants to see us in the kingdom. Um, and he knows that's where we'll be ultimately happy, even though, you know, mm -hmm. on this earth, we do go through struggles. So um, yeah. Ephesians 6, again, Ephesians has got a lot of good stuff. Um, Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 3. This is about why, why correction is a good thing. And obeying. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and your mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. So again... Um, when it comes time for correction, bring it back to the big picture. You know, sometimes, I mean, I'll use an example with my own children. I won't get into too many details, but there was an argument and someone did something to the other one. And, um, you know, I just, I just like, it just came to me. I'm like, you know, Yeshua came down to this world from the heavenly kingdom. He came down here. And he literally spent his whole life doing for others. He didn't do one thing for himself. And I was like, you know, like if you can bring it back to, wow, like what our Messiah did for us, he did everything for others. Mm -hmm. Do we have room to be selfish? Like, do we have room for any little selfishness in our life? No, like he's our example. And if you can bring it back to like the word and, you know, what God's done for us, sometimes that just... That will quicken them, right? <laughs> well, the verse you just read reminds me of from the Ten Commandments. Honor yeah. thy father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which Jehovah your God has given to you. Mm -hmm. So again, that's that's the first commandment with promise. Yeah. And yeah, like we do discipline our children, but we need to do it in love. And um, I found a few verses about that as well, because I think sometimes children get beat over the head with, you know, the Bible and other things. Um, as they're growing up, and it's not necessarily done in love, and that can actually cause 
um, and especially in abusive situations that can cause people to not even be able to connect with a heavenly father because their father or mother was so right. exactly. um, domineering and abusive to them. Um, so there's a few verses about that because I know that, you know, even like for all parents, there's times where you're, you aren't patient when you're, um, when you're punishing your children and, you know, that can really, that can really cause some problems later. So I grabbed a few verses about that as well. And again, Ephesians is, is good. There's one in Ephesians, um, Ephesians chapter six. Find it here, Ephesians chapter yeah, six, nice verse here. Yeah. four. And you fathers and mothers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Um, there's one other verse that's very similar, but I like as well. That's in Colossians chapter three. I have it written what? down, so I'll read it from here. But okay, what verse? Colossians chapter three, verse twenty-one. And that one's very similar. It says, fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can, I've seen that in families where um, this constant, um, you know, telling them not good enough, all this kind of stuff can lead to discouragement. Um, it can also lead to anger issues as well. And yeah. Well, and proper training is going to reward the good things. The things that they do good, catch them doing good yeah. things, yeah. praise them. They're going to want to do more things because they're going to like that praise. Nobody likes to be constantly mm -hmm. belittled, mm -hmm. scolded, whatever. And sometimes it's necessary, but focus on the good things. When you see them yeah. doing something good and compliment that, that's a good strategy. That's right, yeah. And talking about reinforcing bad behavior... You've probably seen video posts on Facebook or different places. Kids are misbehaving, and their parents, oh, isn't that cute? Oh, look at little Johnny mm. over there. He's, you know, spanking yeah. the cat, thinking that's cute. It's like, no, 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 spanking the cat is not cute. Don't reinforce a bad behavior by yeah. acting like it's cute, putting it on Facebook, letting all these people commenting on it. That's going to reinforce some negative it behavior. It is, definitely, yeah. It happens a lot on Facebook, right? Yeah. People yeah. People posting these things. So don't be that parent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you'll have to share about your book that you read. <laughs> oh, I did. Well, when I found out I was going to be a grandma when I had never even had children, it's like, oh my goodness, how do I do this? I didn't know it was so similar to dogs or I'd have been just fine. But <laughs> <laughs> Seth is laughing at yeah. that one. Yes, okay. Seth loves animals. He doesn't yeah. mind. I came across this book. It's called How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. And I got a, it's a great book. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things to talk so kids will listen is actually less talking. If they come to you and uh, they're mm -hmm. not happy and you might say, oh, you kind of look down today, then shut up and see what they say. Now, maybe they run off to their room and they don't want to talk about it. Wait until they are ready to. But if they say, yeah, I am, rather than say, well, you know, what happened? Or, oh, you shouldn't feel down or, you know, whatever. Just, hmm, or, oh, or tell me more. Yeah. Just yeah. a simple little acknowledgement of that. And then maybe say, oh, you know, that maybe name a feeling to it. Oh, that must have made you feel bad. That must have hurt your feelings. And just acknowledge what they're feeling and let them talk about it. And often they'll come up with their own solution. Yeah. The more you, you yeah. listen, you're listening more than you're trying to direct. And sometimes it's better if they come up with their own solution to a right. problem. But the, how to listen so kids, that's how to listen so kids will talk, but how to talk so kids will listen. I guess both of those are kind of in there. That mm -hmm. was the listening one. But one of the good things I learned out of this book, too, was... When you do catch the child doing something good, you want to compliment them for it, but not just say, oh, you did a great job, but get specific. I did this with Seth one time. Mm -hmm. the, Tom mm -hmm. and, and Alicia and I were sitting outside, and Seth was doing some weed eating. And when he'd finished, Tom says, oh, that looks great. And Alicia says, yeah, you did a good job. And I said, yes, Seth, you really did a great job, especially the way you did around those rocks. So I named a specific. And then I said, you were really conscientious, which assigns a good characteristic that he wants to think of himself as. Yeah. And 
his face just <laughs> glowed yeah, when he beaming. got that more more feedback. It was actually yeah. feedback he could use. He had a specific of what he had done well, and it made him realize that, wow, he had this good characteristic that he displayed by doing it. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Of course, now from now on, if I talk to the kids like that, I was, oh, well, you just read that in the book. But, <laughs> I did just read the book, well, but I'll always be yeah. sincere about it when I do. Yeah. How's that? Well, that's great. So if you are struggling, and there are a lot of parenting classes, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. and another thing to kind of plug my industry, a lot of you know that I worked as a pregnancy massage therapist and birth doula, and also taught infant massage. And studies have shown that parents who massage their children are less likely to abuse their children. Huh, wow. So there's even positive touch that you can do that's right. going to improve your relationship with your kids too. Right. So we'll just throw that little plug in there. Oh, that's interesting. That's that's great. I don't yeah. know how we don't do a lot of well, <laughs> the kids walk on daddy's back when he <laughs> they sore back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're getting too tall and too big for that now, but they used to always walk on his back. Now, Alicia, what happens if you and Brian have a, a disagreement on how to discipline your children? Has that ever happened? And, and if so... <laughs> yeah, uh... that's happened. <laughs> um, one thing I would say is that it's really important not to argue about about parenting in front of your children. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. That makes sense. <laughs> um, actually, I, I'll talk about my dad for a minute. Um so he came from a family of seven kids, and they um, struggled. They they weren't they were a little poor. Like they didn't you know they had trouble making ends meet. I think at some points, and he says that he cannot remember one time that his parents argued in front of them. Yeah. Like which is pretty impressive. I don't know if I like I couldn't say that. <laughs> But um, then he talked to his mom about that later, and she's like, oh, yeah, we had some arguments. He's like, we used to go to the woodshed and hash it out. <laughs> so I think back in those days, it was just kind of, that's just the way it was. Like, um, And I, I think that's good. I mean, everyone has disagreements, but I don't think it's the greatest thing to have those in front of your children. I think it makes them feel insecure and who knows what else, right? It's right. just not really the right thing to have going on in your home if you can help it so mm -hmm. now yeah. kids sometimes have a tendency to try to play mom off a of dad oh well you know mm -hmm. you say no they can't well i'll go ask dad dad'll yeah. let me kind of thing yeah. do you have any we we have taught we've we've caught that a few times and we've definitely like nipped that in the bud <laughs> like <laughs> that's not allowed <laughs> It's just, yeah, like if, if one parent says it's happening this way, then that has to be okay for the kids, right? Because mm -hmm. we, we're pretty much on the same page with most things in parenting. So we're, we have to have that trust between each other as well. Like Brian and I have to have that mm -hmm. trust that, you know, we're okay with the other parent making well, and it's one thing you're bringing up that the kids, it's not good to fight in front of the kids because it makes them insecure. Well, it's also not good for them to try to wedge in between the two of you. If you <laughs> yeah, you know, that's not That's, not, right, that's not, not a good thing. So if your children are doing that, yeah. then you, you have need to have a to... united front. You have to be united. Mm -hmm. um, at least appear united with the kids. <laughs> Don't yeah. blow your cover. Yeah. <laughs> They're listening. Brian's going to hear this too, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I was going to share a few things that kind of thinking about our whole parenting experience, a few things that I've seen, um, in our, that seem to help really well in our family and things that I've seen in others that you can tell that's breaking down. Um, number one from like the time you bring your baby home from the hospital is consistency. And I've seen that with other families that, you know, they, they have really really wonderful children they're very consistent um, and it really does start when you have a baby and you know it's going to be consistent your child from the time they're a toddler is going to know what the boundaries are they're going to be secure in those boundaries and they won't test them as much as if they really know that those are secure so mm -hmm. you know it's just like torah the the torah actually keeps us safe it's like a, a safeguard around us and the family um the family rules and grounded in the Bible are to keep your children safe and they need to know that that's not going to change and 
it's consistent. So mm-hmm. um, one book that really helped us, I think we, a friend of ours gave it to us when, before we had Seth. Um, and some people may have a problem with this book there. We didn't necessarily follow every single thing in this book, but it did help us immensely from the time Seth was a baby. It's called Baby Wise. It's actually written by a Christian pediatrician named Dr. Robert Bucknam. Um, and it actually kind of, it's sort of about having a schedule for your child, kind of a rhythm of how they're, how they're a baby, I should say, how their day goes and how their night goes and everything. And our kids were amazing eaters from the time they were, came home from the hospital. They gained weight amazingly. They were chubby. They were round. They (laughs) had rolls. (laughs) They're not now at all. And they slept through the night from like seven weeks. Um, Wow. No problems with crying through the night or anything. And that book, I would say, was like one of the number one reasons that that all happened. So, And that book is very much about consistency. Um, But yeah, it goes into everything. You know, as your kids start to eat food for the first time, being consistent about, well, this is what we're having today. And, you know, you need to try a little bit of everything. You told yeah. me a story about <laughs> Seth one time at one of the festival events. Yeah. Do you want to share well, that? Well, yeah. So when a bunch of kids get together, kids don't feel like eating because they just want to run out and play. So a few times, and of course, the food there was maybe a little different than the food at home. But we we always made sure that our kids took a little bit of everything and that, you know, we're not going to give them a huge plate, but they have to eat everything on their plate and then they can go out to play. And... Um, Seth was way too excited and these kids were all like hovering over him. Seth, when are you going to be done? And do we want to play? And so um, <clears throat> we ended up putting that away because he just was not eating it. And we brought it out for the next meal. <laughs> and so it's a little challenging because there's always people that are like, mm, are you sure that's, you know, you shouldn't do that. But, you know, being consistent and for the kids to know that like we don't waste food in our family. There might come a time where we don't have enough food and We don't want to look back and be like, oh, wow, we sure wasted food when we would have been happy to have that food, you know, later on. Yeah. So were you raised with the starving kids in China (laughs) story? You you clean up your plate because there's children starving in China. It's like, how does me eating too much help them? I don't know. But But yeah, just just the idea of wastefulness, you know, it just kind of teaches them. And you don't need to, you know, make it too, too much, you know, just... You eat a little bit of everything, and then if you're still hungry, you can have some more. But just the idea of consistency with that, with behavior expectations, you know, yeah, we don't walk all over the furniture. And then when my kids go to someone's home, they're not going to do that, right? Like, right. just be consistent and and in everything. So that that's something I think is really important in parenting. Um, and then something else that I think we kind of touched on is patience, right? Because we know that in our when we're um, disciplining our children, we need to do it in patience, um, not in anger. And that's reflection of our Heavenly Father. Now, it's a little out of context, but there is a verse that says, in your patience possess ye your souls. And I can see how that would kind of apply with parenting as well, to be patient because your soul could be... Yeah, exactly. Well, if you teach your children, if you show them anger, it teaches them to have that same you know, tendency as well. Like, I'm sure all parents would say they start to notice their, you know, flaws or whatever coming out mm-hmm. in their children. And it's because you model it for them, right? Like, if you're, you need to work on your own right. <laughs> character it's development. It's not the do as I say and not as yeah. I do. That yeah. does not work for, for raising children. No, they're like it's... little sponges. They literally take in everything around them. So, yeah, and yeah. it's a double standard. You know, yeah. you do it, but they get punished for doing it. Yeah. 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 It's not it's right. So true. Yeah. So I'm not sure if there's any more points. I think the big thing that sticks out to me in parenting is consistency. That's the big one. Yeah. Really being consistent. Um, it's my husband used to work with a man with developmental disabilities and um, some like anger and stuff like that. And really the thing that worked best for him was consistency. If you say, oh, if you do that, then this is the consequence, and then you don't follow through, Mm -hmm. that, like, the kids will grab that, and that'll be stuck in their brain forever. And kids are experts at the give an inch, they want a mile. 
<laughs> yeah. If they get away with a little bit, they're going to push you. They mm-hmm. have a tendency to push as, as hard as they can to get, you give them a little bit. Yeah. yeah. They're going to see if they can get more mm-hmm. and get more. Yeah. And something I also just thought of as we're talking is um, it's really important not to discipline your children in front of everyone as well. Oh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, that can that can lead to those things we talked about, discouragement and anger. Um, it's really important. Yeah. And, you know, like, and I think for the kid, it's like, wow, all these people are going to remember this about me forever, even if I, you know, change my ways or whatever. Um, So it's really important to like take your kid aside discreetly. And And the same is true in a marriage. Uh, I've been around in situations before where, you know, the wife starts nagging at the husband or the other way around right in front of people. It's uncomfortable for the people who are there. Yes. And it's, you know, yeah. so yeah, same totally. thing. It's it's a matter of respect. Yeah. And I think as parents, our, our role and our goal should be that we want our children to change for the better. And if you reinforce bad behavior in front of a whole bunch of people, it's super discouraging. And really, you'd like to take your kid aside and say, you know, I just noticed this and we don't we don't want to be like that. We don't want to treat people like that mm-hmm. so that they can go back out and change their behavior and move on. Right. That's what we would hope. So exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. but you don't want to you don't want to hurt them in the process. Mm-hmm. You don't want to hurt their, mm-hmm. you know, their yeah. Their children are, are tender hearted, yeah. and you don't want to hurt exactly, them. Yeah, the confidence yeah. thing and everything. So that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Thanks for bringing that up. So hopefully those are a few things. Hopefully there's something you can take out of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you know in the comments if you have some amazing parenting tip that. We could, I, I would love grandparenting tips. Yes, you there know. you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely feel happy. free to share in the comment section. And if you were blessed by this video, please share it as mm-hmm. well or hit the thumbs up or like or whatever, depending on which uh, yeah. format you're watching it on. Yeah, definitely. And thank you. Thank so. you for listening again. We're happy to share with you from Camp to Mead. Okay. Thank you.